Right, evening everyone. Filmed at the movies. Heading to screen 10 for Gladiator 2. Welcome back everyone, just seen the film, I've come out into the cafe now just to give a few instant thoughts while they're fresh in the mind. As always I paid for my own ticket today to see the film, this channel isn't part of the marketing scheme like others are so there's no embargo, you know, I don't have to wait to give spoilers and have you noticed the studio seem to be handing out free tickets like confetti now, they're all at it. Not here, I'll give my own opinions on this non-shield channel. Okay, thoughts on Gladiator 2. Good movie. It's difficult to pin it down into mere words because I love the original movie that was released a while ago now. It was 2000. So that was fresh in the mind because I revisited it on this channel not so long ago. And I gave it five stars, of course. It's a fantastic movie. So you've got that really high benchmark for any sequel. The second movie, of course, was never going to live up to that. But I thought it was good. The big overall, I guess, um, abbreviated review is that there seemed to be a less focus than the original film. In that one, it was very simple. We knew who was good. We knew who was bad. And it was emphasised to us that we needed to hate the Commodus character. When you remember those scenes where Maximus's family were killed at their homestead by those guards and their hanging corpses, we felt the weight and the uh, devastation that Maximus must have felt. And that was very clear as an audience member looking at that. And it got you in the feels, along with the fantastic music as well that doesn't seem to be replicated in the sequel. It's good, and it's good for large portions of the film, but it just seems to be a, a yarn, and pretty much doesn't really need to exist. But nevertheless, we've got it. There's a somewhat lack of focus, and we're starting to blur the lines here, and uh, a few stories interwoven. We don't quite know who's good and evil, for large portions of the film. Initially, I thought it was Pedro Pascal's character, Acasius, as the main villain, but he, but he wasn't really. He came across as just a noble soldier doing what he needs to do, and he's just caught up in the wrong place at the wrong time and has to be killed by Lucius. And again, Denzel Washington. Fantastic in the film, I thought. Is he a nobleman? Is he good? Is he evil? He's a manipulator. And he eventually wants to climb the ranks, and one way or another, he's going to get there by, you know, being a talker. He talks a good game, just like a politician. He'll tell you what you need to hear, but really he's manipulating you. He'll appease the Emperor Twins by either giving them the, the gladiator games and all the bloodshed that they're after, or by turning maybe one against the other and eventually killing them very deceptive man as it turns out. I just wanted there to be less lines blurred, I just wanted there to be a little bit more focus because the original film was so simple but here we've got some politics to think about, probably similar to how I felt when the Star Wars prequels first came out. They're good movies but you know it's less focus and we've got some more thinking to do of what's going on behind the scenes politically and in some parts of this movie we're not sure who to root for, apart from Lucius himself, brilliantly played by Paul Mescal. It was fantastic throughout the film. Not on the level of Russell Crowe. That was a, a leading man that I think was unequalled. And very few would be able to step into those shoes anyway. The rest of the cast I thought was great. Connie Nielsen as Lucilla, fantastic. Still very beautiful woman. Um, both emperors, very weird. Um, in a good way though, I think that's the message they're trying to bring across, it's all a little bit crazy, you know, up there in the decisions they're making. 
and eventually they're turning Rome inside out, causing turmoil with the people who pretty much starting to turn on them. So while it's all performed and executed very well, the film looks great and each scene flows. I think the first half of the film is a little bit pedestrian and then it picks up at the end just as soon as those little story threads start to become clearer. Macronus is starting to reveal you know, his true intentions with getting progress up the ladder. Then we start to feel for Acasius and uh, how he's caught in the middle. But there's nothing just getting you. You know, it's just far away from how good the first film was. We hear the same kind of beats in the soundtrack, but that music is never going to equal Hans Zimmer's brilliant original themes that were throughout the original film. We only get it in fits and starts here. And the spectacle is great. Some good um, CG effects. The Colosseum looks fantastic. As do all the animals. There's a lot of animals now, isn't there? They've got those <laughs> those chimps or dogs or whatever they're supposed to be. Probably, probably both. We've got a water battle in the Colosseum now full of sharks. It all looks as good as it can be. I just wish overall that it was a smaller personal story. The original film was grand and epic, but underneath all that, we knew the journey that Maximus had to go through. And that film was deep for me, and I wanted more of the same, I guess. But overall, again, I thought Paul Mescal was brilliant. I was kind of wondering how they would maybe retroactively change who his father was. It's quite difficult talking about this film because you're always having to compare it to the original film, which was so good. And that's a shame that it wasn't really another personal story, like I said earlier. I just wanted it just more simplified. And if we held on Lucius's character for most of the film, like we held on Maximus in the original, I think we, we could have got there and just make his relationship with his mother much clearer. Maybe if they made that thread a, a constant throughout and they're having to keep it a secret, we could have felt he's in a turmoil because he already lost his wife in that original battle and he, does, and he doesn't want to lose his mother as well. So that was my real complaint with this film. It's just the lack of focus. So let's give this a score now. I thought it was good. It's not quite four stars, so I'll give it three and a half. I just really wanted it to be better than it was. And to me, maybe a four-star film means it's really good. I think Gladiator 2 is just shy of that, so three and a half for me. Okay, thank you for joining me once again. I'm off home now, and why not join me again soon for further reviews coming. Like and subscribe, and all the best to you. Take care.